So I decided to go ahead and create a brand new series here on the channel and I'm going to call this series a first impressions to Genshin. Now this series is going to be catered to my beginner players that have just started the game of Genshin or are brand new to the game. Now I did a very similar series to the previous game that I covered called Honkai where I called the series a beginner's guide to Honkai. I still actually have a playlist of it on the channel where it was to help beginners players because when you first start a game especially when the game's been out for a little bit it can be a bit overwhelming because there's a lot going on and there's a lot of things you may not understand and it could really be a daunting thing to take on when you first start a game so i like to do these series to help beginner players out to better understand the game and at least point them in the right direction and get them a bit of a head start so they have a better understanding of what's going on so obviously like i mentioned this is catered to my beginner players so if you're a veteran here i do implore you go down in the comments below help the beginner players out because there's a lot of things that i'm going to miss and there's probably a lot of things that i don't know that you do so i do truly appreciate thank you guys so much and i do hope you enjoy the series we're going to start the series off by today's video talking about what i consider the top five best five star dps pure dps characters in the game of genshin so let's go ahead and jump straight into it Baby girl gone you, I should have kissed you, I should have told you how I feel, but next time I won't stop until I have your heart, and if your feeling is real, baby girl gone you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> what hold on what happened hold on we're talking about the top five best five star pure dps characters in the game of genshin impact right now based off of my subjective opinion i don't know what just happened there um <clears throat> let me collect myself so right best top five best five star dps pure dps characters in the game based off of my subjective opinion we're going to be talking about that right now i do hope you enjoy and if you have a differencing opinion because i know you will let me know in the comments down below i would love to see what you All guys right so starting at number five is big daddy Duluth. but before we jump into it i just want to mention if you do enjoy the video go ahead and drop a like and if you really enjoy the video go ahead and consider subscribing join the fbg family as well as a link to the discord will be in the description down below go ahead and join the discord today so you can discuss Genshin with like-minded people but anyways coming in at number five is Big Daddy Duluth now by no means having him at number five means he's bad every character that we speak about in today's video is going to be absolutely fantastic and worth investing in that was the reason for the video in the first place so and also keep in mind don't worry about my level and where I have my Duluth at I got him recently, so I got him late, and I haven't invested the resources just yet. If I gotten him earlier, he, trust me, he would be level 90 and all decked out. But anyways, I digress. Deluc, absolutely fantastic. He is one of the best pure DPS characters in the game because of a couple of reasons. First and foremost, he is Pyro, and that is one of the best, if not the best, element in the game at the moment right now. So... That is a super plus. The second reason is because he is a Claymore user, and the Claymore users are really good, in a sense, damage dealers. They're great to have on teams uh, for being able to dish out a lot of damage, also mining purposes and things of that nature. They just have some great utility. But he's also a quick striking Claymore user, which is even better. So he's able to strike very fast for a Claymore user. And he can utilize the Wolf Gravestone, which is an absolutely fantastic weapon. If you don't know, we'll probably do separate videos on weapons for beginners and things of that nature. But he can utilize this weapon to give some supporting capabilities to his teammates. So he has that application as well. Really, really good stuff right there. He's easy to build when it comes to artifacts. You slap the four-piece Crimson Witch on him and let him go berserk. So an easy-to-build character, which is very nice, especially for beginners. Uh, so you don't have to really think too much on what type of artifacts. Uh, his ascension stat is crit rate if I'm not mistaken. So you can go ahead and put a crit damage helm on him and deck him out to the max. And that's where he's going to be really good for you. His constellations, when you take a look at his constellations, um, you can really determine a pure DPS character based on their ascension stats. So 
Uh, for example, if, if their ascension stat when you're leveling them up is crit rate or crit damage, especially crit damage, you know they're going to be a, an, an extremely hard hitter and a really good DPS character for you. But then you start to take a look at Deluxe constellations and you start to see that the constellations, when you start to get them on him, they are all to increase his damage. So C1 deals 15% more damage. C2, when he takes damage, his attack increases so he does more damage. Uh, his C4... He does more damage <laughs> and then c6 he does more damage so it's really good his attack speed increases and it all leads to having a better dps character all around and then his talents just mimic that as well so deluke absolutely fantastic one of the best dps characters that you can go ahead and invest in and he's gonna pay dividends for you Fantastic, fantastic. Coming in at number four is Pretty Boy Child. Now, I really like this character. I think he's fantastic, and I think he's one of the hardest hitters in Genshin Impact. One of the best pure DPS characters that you can have in the game if you do obtain him as a five star. Now, he is Hydro, so he does mesh well on a lot of different team comps. What's really unique about Child is his uh, stance, the way he's able to change stances, I should say. So he is an archer or a bow user but he does switch his stances so he can go close combat and be able to do damage that way so he's really unique that way um a little more technical in that aspect so he's not i, I wouldn't say he's not beginner friendly but he's gonna take some getting used to he's different than deluke in the sense that deluke you just swing and go nuts with uh tartaglia or child you have to utilize his stances and you have to kind of micromanage that a little bit and be a little more strategic when using him. But once you get him down packed, he's a great character and he does some dummy damage. So like I mentioned, bow user, he's pretty simple to go ahead and deck out as well. You put the four piece heart of depth set, which is tailor made for him. And that is going to be perfect. Make sure you have a hydro damage goblet and you are all set to go. His constellations, what's great about Child or Tartaglia is you really don't need constellations on this character per se. The other characters that we talk about, including Deluke, you don't really need constellations on them as well. They perform perfectly fine at C0. C1 is really good for him, but after that, you I don't really think you need m many other constellations after that. Uh, and then his talents, once again, um, all point to him being a pure DPS I think he has one of the hardest hitting ultimates in the game, if not the hardest hitting. I think he's second next to Zhongli uh, when it comes to the elemental burst, how hard he hits. But Child, Tartaglia, one of the best DPS characters in the game, and he hits extremely hard. Now, moving on to number three, and that is Ganyu. So I know a lot of people are going to say Ganyu is the best DPS. She should be number one. And I wouldn't argue with you on that. I, I Definitely everybody has their opinions and she is one of the best DPSs in the game. She hits extremely hard. But if we're talking about pure DPS, like that's all they do is pure DPS. The other characters we're going to talk about here in just a second, number two and number one, I think are better pure DPS characters. Um, but Ganyu is a fantastic main DPS. But what's so great about her is that she has so many other great qualities to her that makes her just an overall fantastic character one of the best characters that you can obtain in the game just in general because not only is she a hard hitter not only does she do big pp damage but she's also able to support the team really well being cryo as well as her elemental skill and elemental burst supports the team really well she is just all around just probably one of the best balanced characters that you can obtain in the game just from a pure utility standpoint and her kit, great character, easy to build. You can go with the four-piece Wanderer Troop or you can go four-piece uh, Blizzard Strayer, whichever you prefer. Uh, she ascends by crit damage, if I'm not mistaken, so you can get her a crit rate helm and build her crit damage as high as possible. She's just great. All around great character. Hits hard. She's cryo, so she fits on a lot of team comps, if not all team comps. Ganyu, I can only say good things about this character each and every time that I talk about her. Only good stuff to talk about her. She's fantastic, and I absolutely adore her. Moving on to number two, it is Zhao. Now, one and two can be interchangeable. I won't argue or quarrel with you if you interchange them either way. Whichever you prefer. At this point, it comes down to a gameplay style and just a who you enjoy as a character. Uh, style but Xiao 
arguably the best DPS, pure DPS character in the game. He is the hardest, or if not one of the hardest hitters in the game. He is the best at clearing out mobs. Uh, if there's a lot of enemies, he's the best at doing that. The thing about Zhao though is he's one of those characters that you need to hyper invest in and that you need to spend a lot of resources on and then once you do you need to cater the team around him because he does suffer from a few weaknesses but if you do invest the time and if you do invest the resources this character will pay dividends for you on another level he is just incredible the amount of damage that he can do in such, such a short uh, time span. He just wipes enemies out extremely fast and extremely quickly because of his kit and because of his ascension. He has the highest base attack in the game, if I'm not mistaken, out of all characters. Uh, so that helps him out a lot. Uh, his ascension, I believe, is crit rate, if I'm not mistaken on that. And uh, he has this weapon right here, which is tailor made for him. Now, his constellations um, are C1 is really good, and I think it's underrated, so that's good. Other than that, every other constellation leading up to C6 is not all that great. C6 is where Zhao becomes utterly broken, and then at that point, the best DPS character in the game, pure DPS at C6, especially at clearing out mobs because he can basically spam his E and uh, just plunge like no other. So, Zhao fantastic a fan favorite i enjoy him i've actually been using him more often um now than i did earlier when i first obtained him because when i first obtained him i wasn't too I, I wasn't too into his gameplay style but now that uh, i've been using him more I, i've been enjoying using him more so ciao fantastic i love this character now and he is great now coming in at number one and this may have a just a hint just a tiny tiny little bit of bias in this one and that is the girl who tao but honestly from an unbiased standpoint as well i i do think she is one of the best pure dps characters in the game if not the best because she is pyro so i would have put xiao there but because she's pyro and i think pyro is just such a dominant element to have in the game i think that's what ranks her just a little bit above xiao but she hits like a truck, like an absolute truck. And I'm not talking about just on her elemental skill and her basic attacks, but her elemental burst, it just does dummy damage. It really just wipes the field out. She's absolutely incredible at C0 or C6. Um, she's really easy to build in the aspect that you just put the four-piece Crimson Witch if you want to. You can put a four-piece Lava Walker. She's very versatile, so you can go many different ways. Uh, she ascends by crit damage, so right there alone should tell you that she's just a hard hitter. So you get her a crit rate hat, and she's good to go. Her weapon, if you happen to get it, is probably the best pole arm in the game. And it's just absolutely incredible. Tailor made for Hu Tao allows her to hit tremendously hard. Uh, her constellations are pretty good. C1, I think, is a little underrated as well, just like Xiao's. Um, the other one, C2 unlock some more damage potential it's really nice like her constellations are nice um c4 is really just for her party members so she has a bit of supporting capabilities with that and then c6 is just for fun um c6 is not one that's necessary by any means it's just fun to use and it does come in handy from time to time but it's not necessary um her talents all just increase her damage of course and makes her hit like a truck she's just fantastic a really really strong character once again one of the best pure dps characters in the game and with her being pyro she fits on a lot of team comps and she fits in a lot of team synergy aspects the way she uses um her kit as well uh it does encourage switching through your characters so you pop her e let her go absolutely nuts and then switch her out when it's on cooldown and then switch into another character let them go nuts and then bring her back in so she does encourage that rotation of your characters to be able to pop elemental skills elemental burst utilize their passive talents and then bring her back in and let her go nutty once more so hu tao once again maybe a little biased i know i'm probably going to get people saying that you know xiao should have been there uh tartaglia should have been there gan yu should have been there but hu tao she's uh she's fantastic and i love her and i had to put her at number one so just to go ahead and reiterate one more time Hu Tao, I would put at number one. Zhao, a very close second. Ganyu, a very close third. You can interchange all three of them. You know, one, two, or three. 
Uh, after that, I would go Tartaglia, number four, and then Big Daddy DeLuke at number five. Now, I did want to go ahead and mention some honorable mentions, um, and that is one, Kuching. Um, I'm, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. Uh, honorable mention, though, a fantastic DPS character. The thing about Kuching, though, is that Electro is just not the most dominant element in the game right now. It does need a bit of a buff. Not to mention, she has some quirks in her kit when it comes to her charge attacks and that not being too beneficial. Her gameplay is kind of wonky in my opinion, but nonetheless, she is a hard hitter and she's absolutely fantastic. So, Kuching, I wanted to make sure I mentioned so I don't get hate and this video get disliked nuclear bombed. <laughs> <laughs> for my coaching mains uh and then Klee, I, I did have to mention Klee. now the reason why i didn't put Klee in the top five is because one deluke and then two hu tao so you got the pyro element kind of covered but Klee is an extremely hard hitter the thing about Klee, and another reason why she wasn't in the top five is because she's a little wonky in her gameplay style as well for a beginner player it could be a little difficult to get used to her um, and she's not the most user friendly, especially for like mobile players and once again beginner players. So I didn't put her there. But if you do put some time into learning her gameplay and you invest some resources in her, she's going to hit like a truck. She's probably going to out DPS a lot of the characters that I mentioned because of how hard she hits when it comes to her uh, E and elemental burst as well as her passives. If you have constellations on her, it's really, really good. She has some great constellations. Uh, she's pretty easy to build as well. Not difficult at all. And then, you know, you get a decent catalyst on her. She'll be okay. So, Klee, I did want to go ahead and mention Klee. So, those are my honorable mentions. But in the comments down below, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys, um, your guys' list would be, I should say down in the comments below i do hope you enjoyed today's video and i hope it helped once again my beginners players and veterans if you are watching this video go in the comments down below and maybe add to what i missed or add on to what i covered nonetheless guys i do uh, appreciate it i hope you enjoyed i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here remember to stand out be different have fun go further beyond in everything that you do and until next time my boys until next time it's your homie cody gt and i'm out bye guys